It is hard to believe that there are still people out there who say that end guns cannot be used for game assets, while they simply do not know how to do it right. Let me show you how easy it is to optimize end gun base mesh for exports to programs like Substance Painter, Marmoset Toolbag or Unreal Engine and so on. Let's go. Now before we start talking about optimizing mesh for game engines, I would like to say that if you're new to Blender and you don't really know, you know, what the hell's going on, where to start, etc. I would suggest you grab our Jumpstart Hard Surface in Blender course, which will teach you all the basics and foundations of Blender and Hard Surface, because you need to know these things before you move further to, you know, more complex stuff like game assets, okay? Because first you need to learn, you know, the basics, and then you're going to be able to move on to something more complicated. The course is free, the link is in the video description, and in just a few hours it will teach you everything you need to know to get started, to get solid foundations for Blender Hard Surface. So grab the link in the video description and enjoy. Okay, so we have an gun based model here. And we're going to optimize it for game engine. Now I'm not going to be optimizing the whole thing. I'm just going to get one of these pieces and I'm going to show you how I go about it. And the process is the same for everything else. Okay. So if someone tells you that you need quads to, you know, only quads to create game assets, it's they full of shit. They don't know what they're talking about. They most likely don't know how to do it. So let me show you how to easily optimize this for game engines. Okay. I'm gonna grab this piece, go to uh, object mode, and let's just have a look. So we have an absolute mess in here. We have a lot of stuff that we don't need, and we need to remove quite a few things. So first of all, when you're optimizing for game engines, you want to introduce as little geometry as possible, right? So I mean, we don't need this mark sharp edges first of all. So we're going to remove all the geometry that we don't need. Now you could do this manually, or what you could do, you could actually run operations in clean mesh which will remove all the junk that you don't need, okay? And leave only edges that support the curvature or, or the shape of the model, okay? We don't need these dense bevels. Now, the key to creating bevels when you model something for game engines, you want to create bevels that have even number of segments or uneven number of edges. And the reason being is because you can then select every second edge here in between these two extreme supporting edges and you can delete them or dissolve them and this will basically half the resolution of the bevel and create a lower poly version of your model so it's still going to be more or less round but you know not as uh, not as dense as it was before so this could be a good um, you know optimization for low poly if you need to bake something onto low poly okay now the same here we're going to grab all these edges here in between and dissolve them and the same we can do in here to be honest we don't need all these edges so now here we have to be a little bit more careful so let's do it this way and boom right now this one probably we should combine this now when you're combining these two edges what you want to do is you want to move this edge to this edge so you're not going to distort this bevel and then we can just alt x to the other side with mesh machine and bob jungle we don't need these edges here in the middle, uh, so we can nuke them. The same here, we can just, you know, uh, remove all these um, to half the resolution here. And the same here, this is way too dense, right? Now here we have a problem. This bevel has an even number of segments. So we can do here, we can actually use Mesh Machine to refuse it. So go to refuse and I'm going to scroll down and reduce the number of segments to that many all tags done now this face here is a little bit messed up uh, i don't think we need this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it here with alt a with machine tools and we're going to clean that and then we're going to simply remove this one because we don't need it and we're good to go now this element here could be baked or you could just leave it it's up to you here the bevel in the back we can do the same way as we did the previous one so simply refuse Scroll down to maybe that many and you're good to go, okay? So this would be more or less optimized. If you really wanted to reduce the number of bevels here, you could still do it with Mesh Machine, but honestly, I think this is fine. Uh, I don't really think we need all these in here as well. We could maybe remove them, you know, to just create a little bit of a lower poly here. Same here, we're going to reduce it. So why refuse? Now, if you have this problem, just press R to rotate it and scroll down. And you can see how easy it is with Mesh Machine. We're going to have more segments here. So if you still wanted to, you could just, you know, lower it down. But, you know, I think this is going to be fine. And I'll take so this side. We're good to go. 
So this is more or less, you know, fixed. And then again, we don't need these. So just nuke them and we're good to go. This face here in the bottom, um, we don't really need it. We can remove it technically. So now there are two ways of doing it, okay? What you can do is you can select this entire face here, uh, all of it, and you could just insert it like this and then delete it, okay? So you're gonna have a little bit of an edge here, so you will be seeing this kind of a bevel here. Or you could just delete the whole face. So you could grab that and, you know, just delete it, right? So uh, faces. And you're gonna be left with this. Now, you will need to secure this bit here uh, because we need that. So just press F to fill it. The same in here and fill that and we're good to go, okay? Now, another vital thing that we need to do is we need to change this bevel. Currently, we have a three segmented bevel here. So if I press Z, you can see that uh, there are three segments, we need one, okay? That's really, really important. When you're creating game assets, you want uh, one segmented bevel. You don't need more than that. And, you know, you can easily export this uh, as is uh, without any problems. And you don't even need to um, worry about UVing because uh, when you UV this mesh as is, which means you're gonna add seams to whatever you need to add them and then export it with a live bevel, um, it's going to be fine. Now, the reason why we're gonna be using a one segmented bevel is because it will create more believable bevels and they're gonna be actually real, real bevels, not just baked bevels. And baked bevels can cause a lot of problems. And currently, you know, the hardware is so strong that you don't have to really worry about it. Games like Star Citizen, Alien Isolation, they all use, uh, you know, this one segmented bevel and it just looks fantastic um, at any angle and in any lighting situation in game engine. So I would recommend you run one segment bevel here and you're gonna be good to go. Now I'm gonna remove this mirror because I don't need it. Now, another thing is that weighted normals in 95% will not work as intended when you export this mesh outside Blender. So you may want to, you know, change it to hard normals. So go to bevel and go to shading and enable hard normals. You can see that already. We get some kind of a weird artifact in here with weighted normals. Let me show you this again. You see this, there's a pool in here. And when I'm gonna remove that and add harder normals, it's very different. So uh, harder normals gonna, you know, give you better result in 95% of cases um, of meshes when you're going to, even in Blender, but when you're gonna export it to Marmos and Toolback or Substance Painter or Unreal Engine, you know, you you may see some issues. So I would, by default, go with harder normals, okay? Now the thing is we don't need here, we don't need this entire face inside here. So what we could do technically, you know, we could sort of uh, insert it and cut it, but honestly, I'm just gonna leave it as is because, um, you know, it's fine. It's not really creating that much of a problem here, okay? If you export this mesh as is, right? So you're just gonna grab this piece and export it as is. You may see shading problems in um, Mamos a Toolbag, Substance Painter, Unreal Engine. And the reason is because these softwares will triangulate your mesh using their own algorithms. And this is where people get, you know, uh, tripped over and they don't know what the hell is going on. The trick to exporting end gun meshes is to triangulate them before you export them in Blender. So what you wanna do is you wanna go here and go to uh, generate tab here and you wanna add triangular modifier and you can actually see how the triangulation has been performed and you can actually check the triangulations by going to solid view, go to uh, settings with hard ops and wireframe and you can see and the triangulation, how is it gonna be actually running on your mesh? Now, by default, this should be fine, but I actually uh, suggest you export this and see how this mesh actually looks in uh, other software, because occasionally what may happen is that really massive angons, uh, like for example, this one here, can create problems uh, where uh, the triangulation is running at very odd angles. So you may want to do, okay, you may want to make them a little bit smaller. For example, by joining certain sections like this, right, and creating a bit more predictable uh, triangulation, especially one that runs at uh, more steep angles in terms of uh, the bevel. So let's say that the bevel goes this way here around, right? 
and you want these edges, the triangulation edges, going more or less perpendicularly away from this bevel, okay? So before that, we have the really steep angles here, like this one, right? And this one is far more manageable, and I think it's going to behave a bit better in the game engine. And also in the softwares like, you know, Mamos, etc. Now this area here is going to cause a problem, and the problem is caused by the bevel overshooting itself. It's simply too big, so you need to make it smaller. The only problem is that if I do that, I'm going to make the bevel here smaller, you see that? So the easiest way to deal with the situation in this case would be simply remove this, right? And simply bake this detail uh, from the original high poly mesh, okay? So just remove this, so honestly we don't need it here, and simply bake this um, on both sides. So here, and the same thing here, I would literally just nuke this, okay? So remove that here, and the same with these, just remove it, and simply bake this detail uh you know from high poly to low poly okay and i think this is going to look really clean same here this triangle is a little bit big so what we could do is uh mirror this to the other side like this with a uh, mesh machine and simply introduce the edge in the middle here which is going to split this um, mesh in two and you can see that the triangulation here is going to be a little bit more uh clean and you're not gonna have these crazy corners going on. Now, this is not a problem, like in situations like this, there's a little bit too much geometry here. So you may wanna do is when you wanna connect these like that here, you could actually use mesh machine for it. So what you could do is you could select these edges here, select this one, go to Q with hard ops and go to operations and star connect okay this is going to manually triangulate this entire corner and it's going to look much cleaner uh, you know than this mess okay so these are things you need to do manually um, in very tricky kind of corners like this you know this is going to look much cleaner if you bring this to game engine or mamos or whatever you want to you know want to bring it to uh, same here just double check if it's everything is fine this could be a bit tricky as well i would actually run a manually an edge here maybe or uh, run a loop here like this bring it up here and connect these like that and i think it's gonna be a bit cleaner here as well and the rest looks fine um that's a little bit congested but i think it's because the bevel is so large so you could make the bevel a little bit smaller to kind of re relax this triangulation here and you're gonna be good to go and if you see any problems with this mesh after bringing it you know outside blender simply see where the issue is and go back and you know try to reroute the triangulation manually and should fix the problem the same here in the front you know we could run the star connectors like we did over there so you could just simply go here and go to operations and run star connect right so when you triangulate it again this this corner is going to be much cleaner and less congested than this mess here because blender doesn't really do a good job automatically you know triangulating these corners when there's a lot of uh, segments of verts and um, you're just gonna try to find the closest uh, way or route between verts to create triangulation which is why you know there's so many uh, edges in here in this area but only a few edges in here so by doing that you tell blender how you want these to run and again it's gonna look much cleaner you know than uh, than this mess okay and again then same here the same thing so i'll just grab these and you know either do that or what you could do you could actually run an edge here so press k c to cut through a and cut like this and then grab these points here and start connect them here right start connect you see and it just simply looks much cleaner than um than the other side okay i mean this is mirrored but if i remove the mirror you know what i mean like this looks less clean uh, than this one right so if i now mirror this to the other side with mesh machine boom that looks really cool and relaxed and i guarantee you this is going to look you know really clean in uh, marmoset or unreal engine okay so that's how you optimize mesh that's ngon based to be exported as a game asset to whatever you want you know like i said marmoset substance painter unreal engine doesn't matter you just need to pay attention to how the triangulation flows in blender make sure that you have hard normals enabled instead of weighted normals because like i said in most cases 95 percent of cases 
this is going to work better than weighted normals. In fact, weighted normals are an exception to this rule. So if something doesn't work, it could be harder normals, but it's it's extremely rare situation. Okay, if you uh, have our game asset course, then you will see that I think almost all the objects in this gun are actually beveled with harder normals not white and normals and that's how it was exported so you know this is what i would recommend all right guys well that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you next time